Vedanta Center in Sydney is organizing an international yoga conference in the first week of October at uh, the Parramatta campus of uh, Western Sydney University. And to tell us more about uh, this international yoga conference, we are very lucky to have Swami Sridharanandji from uh, Vedanta Center in Sydney. Swamiji, welcome to the program. Thank you, dear. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to reach a wider mass of people who would know what the Vedanta Center is and what is the purpose of holding this international conference. This conference is being held by us in Sydney the fifth time. Mm -hmm. We had held this four times before and every time we have coordinated it with uh, Swami Vivekananda Yoga Anushandhan Kendra yes. of Bangalore, yes. where Dr. Nagendra is a founder chairman yes. of that organization. Mm -hmm. Dr. Nagendra is a dedicated person, dedicated to teachings of Swami Vivekananda, and he has taken upon himself to present the philosophy and practical practices of yoga in day-to-day -day human life to improve the quality of human personality and life. Mm. Can I ask you, Swamiji, before we go to the actual yoga conference itself, uh, would you be able to tell us about the history of Vedanta Center here in Australia? I think that is very appropriate. History is a very long one. Mm -hmm. It started sometimes before the Second World War okay. when two ladies from Australia visited India mm -hmm. and found their way to the headquarters of the Ramakrishna Martin Mission south of Calcutta City across the river Ganga. Mm -hmm. At that time direct the disciples of Sri Ramakrishna were alive and one of them, Sri Matswami Shivanandaji, mm -hmm. he was the president of the organization. Yes. Both of them were instructed to teach the principles of Vedanta to Australian masses who are interested to know about India's culture, especially okay. the spiritual culture, mm -hmm. man-making, character-building philosophy. One was ordained into Brahmacharya yes. and she was given the name of Brahmachari the Abhavaniya and the other was named Brahmachari the Haripriya. Mm -hmm. They came back and before the Second World War started, they with great energy tried to propagate the message of Vedanta as epitomized in the lives of this divine trinity, Sri Ramakrishna, Holy Mother Sri Sharada Devi, and Swami Vivekananda. When the war started, it all that was disconnected. Mm. After the war, another gentleman, by profession, a bricklayer, whose name was Mr. James Wheel, oh, okay. and he was initiated into Brahmacharya, that is a vow of total dedication to God, with celibacy, he was ordained into a Brahmachari of the Ramakrishna order mm -hmm. and he was named Brahmachari Viveka Chaitanya. Oh. And he continued to preach and teach the Vedanta philosophy to the extent he possibly could by holding classes, by printing flyers, distributing them and so on. Thereafter, in the early 80s, Swami Ranganathanandaji, the ex-president of the Ramakrishna organization, 
who is no more alive now, Swami Ranganathanandi ji was chosen by the government of India as a cultural representative. Mm -hmm. And he visited continuously for eight long years. During his visit, with the fullest back, backing of the government of India, he toured Australia extensively for eight continuous visits early in 1980s. Because of that, the Sharada mission, the Ramakrishna Sharada Vedanta Society was established in 1982 and Prabhrajika mm -hmm. Ajay Pranamataji was in charge and that was the first institution of the sister body of the Ramakrishna organization in the name of Holy Mother Sri Sharada Devi run as a nunnery was established in Sydney. Thereafter that institution prospered and is still existing and serving the Australian people through their center in Sydney. Life. Similarly we have a center in Melbourne. The Adelaide group had a center very lately inaugurated on Buddha Purnima Day and in Vedanta, in Sydney, the Vedanta Center whose headquarters is placed in Sydney looks after all these centers including ourselves in Sydney and as you very well know in the last few years in Armington at the crossing of the Stewart Street and Marsden Road in an extensive property the Vedanta Center has established a multiple purpose community facility center. Mm -hmm. And this is the fifth time that we are organizing the yoga conference. Yes. Swamiji, of course, there is a lot of misunderstanding about uh, uh, yoga itself. Uh, in fact, there are a lot of yoga schools. Um, when I came uh, 28 years back to Australia, uh, there were not too many yoga schools but uh, West is very adventurous they adopt anything good very quickly and we see a lot of yoga schools but there is a misunderstanding they think it's only bending and stretching exercises could you please explain to our viewers what yoga means just what I was telling what Dr. Nagendra was doing yes. yoga teaches us that a human mind we channelize the energy that the body creates after assimilation of gross food and subtlest food, that is ideas. The body absorbs and produces an energy. That energy is a part and parcel of cosmic energy, energy emanating from God himself. Mm -hmm. Now, if we can managed by proper, disciplined, dedicated, determined effort, that flow of energy, not limited by personal selfish interest, but utilized for all and sundry around the world, then what happens is, according to Swamiji's quotation, which he quoted from Buddha. Bahujana Hitaya, Bahujana Sukhaya, Atmano Mokshartham Jagat Hitaya. The yoga actually teaches that lead your life in consonance with God's will and utilize the part of cosmic energy which is channelized through this body-mind complex in such a manner which is dedicated towards Bhojana Hitaya for the welfare of the many, Bhojana Sukhaya for the happiness of the many, Jagat Hitaya in that process your life is dedicated to the betterment of the quality of life in the world and the end result is you 
liberate yourself and merge with the divine. When this yoga concept came to the Western world, they were more interested in a healthy life and living to enjoy the world more healthily and properly. There is no harm in it. That is what their idea was. So slowly and slowly what happened, there was not enough emphasis given by the so-called yoga teachers to the absolute goal of yoga. Slowly and slowly that goal of yoga, Atmano Mokshartam Jagathitacha, that goal slowly, slowly went into the background and bending, stretching and etc, etc. Along with it, they felt that they are less stressful, less under tension, they are very relaxed. That was the effect of a perfect body mechanism mm -hmm. on the mind yes. or the mind on the body, they are inseparables. So their understanding of yoga was limited between uh, excellent health and a good way of life and living, moral and ethical. And it ended there. The spiritual aspect went into the background. Our desire is to see that this science of yoga, which we call the science of infinite possibility, our intention is that why it is said it's of infinite possibility because a human with his rationality, emotionality, ingenuity and willpower has reached acme of success, pinnacle of success in a direction which the human wanted to. Whereas we want that the yoga philosophy should go into their area of ideas that it is here to make a human being a perfect specimen of a human being. That is, a man-making, character-building, self-imposed discipline which will manifest the potential divinity already in man through management of your own mind and the energy that dissipates through the mind. Right. This is our intention that let proper emphasis be given to a healthy body. That healthy body will allow a healthy mind to reserve, reside in it. And that healthy mind will direct itself to find out a solution of how to make oneself a perfect specimen of a human being by qualitatively improving the human personality to be one with God. Right. This is the intention of having this yoga conference. And you see there in the caption in the flyer, you will find body, mind and soul. Yes. That soul aspect of yoga has to be put into people's mind. It is not only bending and stretching. Mm. Bending and stretching is an adjunct. It is helpful to have a healthy body, yes. to accommodate a healthy mind. And then that healthy mind can be channelized in such a manner that manifests the divinity already within us. Yes. That is the purpose. Thank you for asking this question. <laughs> well, uh, Swamiji, the other thing is, of course, uh, we are seeing the world torn apart by mistrust, uh, uh, you know, a lot of trouble. Uh, as we can see, people walking around with toxic thoughts in, in their mind. How can uh, we uh, propagate the essence of yoga in the world to those people who are thinking in a different way? And how can we bring order to this world? Now listen, you have asked the yoga, the word, you have used the word yoga now. Let us then understand what is the derivative meaning of yoga. The derivative meaning of yoga is to be in communion with. 
that is you are at one end, there's something on the other end with which you communicate or connect. That is, this you, full of frailties and follies and foibles and faults, this you is connected with another existence which is perfection personified. Let us analyze what has gone wrong with humans. And the answer will be very clear. Now, say I am a human, you are a human. The first thing is, I feel I am an individual and I am separate from everybody else. I am, you are. That's the first step. Because I am, I have my ideas, my goals, my ambitions, my desires, my sense of duty, and I create a world of my own. This is what I am. This is what you are. This is what he is. This is what she is. And in this planet, I am told, more than a quadrillion people exist. Each one is an individual and each one is trying to find out his way out. So this world is a madhouse. The world must know it doesn't live individually separatist man. The world is one. And that is why each and every religion, each and every spiritual discipline mentions there is a relationship between you and your God. The Christian sciences say that you are made in the image of God. Your purpose of being born a human is to find your way back to your maker in heaven to enjoy eternal peace in paradise. The Hindus would say, the Vedantins or all aspect of Hinduism would say, to be one with God is the goal of life. If you want to enjoy the company and proximity, it is dualistic. If it is essentially one, but you would like to have a separate existence, that is, I don't want to be sugar, I would like to enjoy the taste of sugar. You remain separate with God, but one with Him, to enjoy His company, or you merge with Him. That is, your individuality, which is a misconception, misunderstanding of facts of life, that misconception and misunderstanding has to be wiped out. Then only the world will be at peace with itself. Now, this is utopian. Each one of us quadrillions cannot be the same. Therefore, what is expected is the leader of humankind, the president of each and every nation, the Senate, and this and this, who are at a position to teach the masses the way of life, they have to be converted. That world is one, we are one, and our goal should be peace and tranquility, joy and ecstasy in everybody's life. This is what the end of spiritual disciplines are, all branches of religion. If looked at from the point of view of the enunciator of that religion, they always spoke of peace and tranquility, joy and ecstasy, and an effort to make a human being a better specimen of a human being. Uh, Mr. Narendra Modi has proclaimed in the United Nations uh, 21st of June as the International Yoga Day. Do you think that uh, because of this proclamation, you talked about the leaders of the world, they, they will get more awareness about the benefits they of your... are already aware. That is why they have accepted this proposal. 
Yes. The world leaders, if you hear them when they speak without any pulse on this way or the other, they open their heart out that there has to be peace and tranquility in this world. Each one speaks that way and they are now understanding and looking towards the East, there's a the culture of India that you, through this type of education, yoga, whether it's jnana, whether it's bhakti, whether it's karma, whether it's raja yoga, this communication with an higher ideal, with a nobler man, and more ennobled he is, his activities will be noble. So this is how that acceptance of the Yoga Day as an international Yoga Day means that the world leaders acknowledge that Yoga has a great role to play to build up the character of a human being. Yes, yes. This is, so it has been, I should say, it's an achievement by our Prime Minister yes. to convince others that this is a way to enjoy peace and tranquility, joy and ecstasy. Yes. Now, if you come to this uh, yoga conference, which is now going to be held uh, in the first week of October, Swamiji, uh, what would you like to see the outcome of this conference? Awareness in the humans that India has to a role to play and not with weaponry, mm. not with any other political pulls and pushes. India has a way to prepare so India has a contribution to make, to teach people how to make themselves a better specimen of a human being. That is all that you need. We'll not use any spiritual language there, a language of robust common sense. We must make ourselves a better specimen of a human being. Mm. Yeah, that's the misunderstanding. Many of the people have, you, they, associate yoga with Hinduism, of course it was, uh, uh, <clears throat> it has got the background, uh, Patanjali. say, just to correct that, Natarajan Sahab, the Hindus say, it is a Sarva Bhoma Mahabrata. Sarva Bhoma means, it is applicable to all areas of this landmass. And it's a Mahabrata, it's a discipline which applies to each and every human being, notwithstanding their faith, their belief, and etc. Et yes, yes. So, the, the, um, now the International Yoga Conference uh, is uh, being held on uh, first week of October, as we said. Uh, what kind of uh, uh, people, I mean, the kind of, what cross-section of people who can benefit from uh, this yoga conference? I would say the brilliant youngsters who are learning to know we to live in the world, they will be benefited. The people who are in a position to teach and to educate and reach a greater number of people, they will be well benefited. The academicians will be benefited. The medical people who only concern to the physical aspect of the human being, they may be benefited. And he who wants to make himself or herself a better specimen of a human being, it's open to them to accept these ideas. Mm. So it is a very broad-based appeal to the society. Right. Well, there is, a, there is a, I don't know whether it is a misconception, but uh, there is a, a saying in the medical fraternity, because I've got a uh, uh, lot of doctors who think that uh, there is a, a sort of a misunderstanding about the role of uh, the modern medicine as compared to what the complementary uh, role that yoga plays. Uh, could you please explain why they should have... <laughs> I, would, I would leave this explanation to Dr. Nagendra and Dr. Nagaratnam and Dr. Manjunath. Mm. Dr. Nagendram is a medical practitioner, was a medical student and a medical scientist. Yes. So is Dr. Mm. Nagaratnam. Yes. And they have now started an hospital in 
Bangalore, where through the yogic method, treatment of human physical ailments are being performed. They will tell you how the body-mind complex are inseparables. Yes. So treat the mind, the body will perform itself. Help the mind by keeping the body healthy. So it is an inseparable mutual interaction between the two concepts, the body and the mind. They are inseparables. Actually, the body and the behavior pattern is a projection of the mind's activity. That is why another branch of medical science is now thriving, behavioral sciences. Yes. From the behavior, you can interpret what is mental attitude you call body language. Yes. You see, all these things are pointing towards that. It's the mind which makes the body act. So, what impact this conference will have, I'll only say humbly, that the people call for it, and that's why this is the fifth time that we are forced to hold it. Mm. So people are interested to know. And it is not Hinduism only. That's what I say. In the very text it is written, it is a Sarvabhoma Mahabrata. That is, each and every individual has the birthright to make himself or herself a better specimen of a human being. And that betterment doesn't move in a circle. It is in a straight line, the betterment ends when you end up with perfection personified, the concept of the divine. Yes. That's it. So, dears, our intention is to remove all these con misconceptions based on robust, commonsensical approach. Can I, uh, as a final Call, would you be able to give our viewers who are looking at this program uh, to come and participate and uh, get the benefits of yoga? Why not? Why not? Why not? Let them, please, as because, let us be very frank with you, as because we have invited international authorities on yoga, a professor from Boston University has agreed to come. Nagedra and Nagaratra Manjunathan are coming from India. There will be others from other countries as well as from Australia. So they are most welcome to come here and participate and build up this organization so that its voice reaches each and every corner of the world. That is the dream that I have. Swamiji, uh, we are very grateful for your finding time and that giving us this advice. Thank you, dear. I would thank you instead. You know, I'll end with a quotation from Swami Vivekananda. Those days are gone when the giver used to stand up and give and the receiver used to kneel down and receive. Today, the giver should kneel down and give because he is offering his heart to the manifestation of divine in the multitudes. So, the giver should kneel down and give, and the receiver should stand up and receive, because he has given the giver an opportunity to serve God in millions. Thank you.